The Isaiah Factor Uncensored starts right now. And welcome to the Factor Uncensored. 18 months into the pandemic, and we're seeing an opposite issue than we did at the beginning. There are more job opens than people looking for work. Employers are desperate, so desperate to hire people to fill these positions. Some are even making their drug policies more lax. They're allowing you to smoke a blunt or two. Well, not exactly, but extension on unemployment benefits are just one factor that has led to this issue. As we find out tonight here on the Factor Uncensored. And joining us now here on the Factor Uncensored is Paul Siegert, who is a managing partner at PCS Advisors. Paul, glad to have you here. We have seen a changing world around us as a result of the pandemic. And what we have also seen is the difficulty difficulties that employers have seen trying to find employees out there. It's like pulling teeth. So now employers are looking at a way to ease restrictions at jobs. Tell us a little bit about that and what we can expect in the marketplace. Yeah, we're getting a lot of feedback from employers. It's, it's in the high 60 something percentile, uh, depending what you read, but we're seeing it day to day in, in our work that employers are struggling more than they have in 15 years to find the talent they need to staff their companies. And so they're having to come up with new ways to attract these employees. There's only so much budget for increasing wages. What else can they do? Uh, we're seeing employers that are waiving drug testing. We're, in fact, I was on a call with an employer here this week where they are looking at taking that step. They're also looking at extending additional benefits medical benefits for some of their contract uh, workforce, the drivers and so on, that they haven't historically offered benefits to. Now, before we get into some of those changes that they're looking at in the marketplace, exactly what is going on? Why can't employers find employees? We know all of those people didn't just leave America, disappeared <laughs> off the face right. of the earth. And we know that people have to work to make a living. And many right. of the unemployment benefits extended uh, have ended. So where are they? Yeah, we're dealing with nine or 10 million people that are kind of dropped out of the workforce. They're still here, as you point out, but they're not coming back to work. And while you do read reports from the Federal Reserve and others and some of the big uh, consulting firms around the country that claim that the enhanced unemployment didn't have an effect on that, the feedback we consistently get from employers is that it has, uh, and that they, they've seen this at each downturn when benefits were increased, or maybe not increased in terms of monthly dollars or weekly dollars, but lengthened, that it does delay the return to the workforce. So that's the feedback we, we're seeing from employers. I also think that COVID, and there's data that definitely supports this, at a high percentage of Americans, when we set everybody at home, for an extended period of time, had a minute to sit and think and say, you know what? I don't really like what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't like what I'm doing. I, I don't like what I'm working with. Too, reflecting yeah. on your job and right. if you're miserable or not, and right. if you're getting if you're getting a livable wage or not. Exactly. So there is now pressure on employers to address that, increase wages for those that can, add benefits. Uh, we have lots of requests about what other benefits can we make available that maybe won't be a huge uh, addition to the budget, but will add value to the employees. We're seeing a big increase in, in mental health benefits right now because that also uh, really ticked up during the pandemic. Now, I'll get back to one of the uh, incentives that employers are now offering, and that would be to relax or in drug testing. Does that come with any type of liability for that employer? Do they have to weigh the pluses and the minuses? I think they do, and they and it does, which is why it had to get to this point for many to consider it. It's still a small percentage of employers, nine or ten percent, that are taking that step, but that's still a, a noticeable number of employers, and that tells you how tough the situation is that they're facing to get the talent on board. Now, are we talking about relaxed drug testing policies or no drug testing policies? Like, if you come up positive for cocaine or meth, there's no way you're getting this job. If you come up for marijuana, okay, we'll let you in. Or is right. it, we don't care about the drugs, we need to operate and run this business, so come on in. 
mostly what we're seeing at this point is the, re the relaxing of the rules around cannabis. So marijuana, okay, other things, not okay. And uh, that really does track along with the fact that lots of states are allowing it and it, it has become a legal uh, recreational activity. So do you think that would be successful in attracting more employees? I think it will. In some industries, certainly. <clears throat> we're still going to see that there's many employers that will not take that step, especially if, they're, uh, if there's risk. The trades, as an example, uh, they, that, the risk would be too great in some industries. But there are other industries where they've made that assessment. They've gotten input from their employment law attorneys, and they feel that it's a reasonable step. And if, if they're at a point where your back's up against the wall and you can either staff your company or not, you're going to have to start to take some measures that you maybe didn't consider before. Any other uh, suggestions consultants like yourself are giving employees to lure more workers back? Uh, any ideas, radical ideas that we haven't heard about? Well, I think the, the mental health benefit is a big item. We are getting a lot of interest there. And employer, employees, when they're polled, are saying that's important. And then the quality of their benefit offering overall, their health benefits. I'm talking to employers who are actually considering, they may have given up covering that benefit at 100% years ago because of cost mm -hmm. and long since stopped paying for dependent premium. And now I just got off a call right before our conversation here where an employer has gone back to covering the employee and their families on wow. their medical coverage, which is virtually unheard of anymore, but they're doing it because they need to separate themselves from the competition and get the talent.